Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our All Saints Peckham service this morning. Now, I can't check the chat to see who's first on today because we're pre-recording this in advance so that our church is freed up for the nativity that we're holding over this whole weekend. But do say hello uh, on the chat feature so that we can uh, be interacting with each other as a church family. Now, tomorrow, the 21st of December, is the longest night of the year. So there's a promise that from here on in, the day starts pushing back. Uh, It's imperceptible at first, but bit by bit, the light starts creeping in. And we can take that as an echo of the much greater promise that we have. We'll hear it in a reading later, that the dawn from on high shall break upon us by the tender mercy of God himself. But I've been reminded this year that actually there's much to treasure in the night time. And I wonder if that's something that you could share in the chat now. Is there anything particularly that you treasure about the dark? For me personally, every night during Advent, I've gone outside and I've lit a candle and I've spent a moment in the dark um, praying for my, my estate, praying for the area. And it's been a really precious, intimate moment with God in the dark. I wonder what your, uh, what your reflection might be on the, on the treasure that you sometimes find in darkness. So we light candles for Advent and Abby's going to come and light some candles now as a reminder of God's promise. And I'm going to, um, I'm going to read as she does that uh, one of the most amazing promises that we have precisely for those of us walking in darkness. It's from Isaiah chapter 9. Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who are in distress. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice in the harvest, as men rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us... A child is born. To us, a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Not our own great ideas, not our own striving, not great great political decisions or scientific discoveries. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish peace for us, will accomplish peace for those in anxiety, will accomplish peace in a world of division, will accomplish uh, peace to tired and anxious hearts, will accomplish peace through the formation of a new multinational boundary-breaking family peace between God and humanity, one for us in Christ. So however you're feeling this morning, shall we take a moment to bring this before God, where we have, um, where we've given in to the ways of division or competition or comparison or pride. Let's confess them to the Prince of Peace and ask him to replace them in our hearts with forgiveness and grace. Shall we pray? where we've gone our own way, Lord, where we haven't trusted in your zeal, but in our own, when we haven't trusted in your peace, but have given in to ways of anxiety or division, would you forgive us? Would you take our sins from us in Jesus and fill us with your spirit? Thank you, Lord. We receive your peace and your forgiveness. And now, as God's forgiven people, I encourage you to stand if you're able, and we're going to worship him together. Oh 
quiet, a star shining in the sky. Below in Bethlehem, the king is sleeping. Oh, what a glorious night. Oh, what a glorious night.
We worship a faithful God and his faithfulness is shown to us in so many ways, not least in the fact of of the finances which have have, uh, kept us as a church going throughout this year. We're really grateful uh, for the faithfulness of God reflected in so many of your faithfulness, those of you that have been able uh, to be in a position to to keep on giving. A slide's going to come up on the screen now for anyone who's in a position uh, to continue that giving as an overflow of worship and thanksgiving to God for his faithfulness. Now we're so thankful to be able to come to a God with all of our hopes and our fears, our disappointments and our joys, a God who is always ready to listen to us when we pray. So shortly we're going to hear from some of our staff around what some of their big asks are uh, for the coming weeks and months. Uh, But before we do that, a little reminder about what what it is uh, to pray to God. Have you ever wondered why so many people pray? Well, Albert Einstein said that there's really only two ways to live, as if nothing's a miracle or as if everything's a miracle. Either life's a fluke and we're just a bunch of highly evolved animals on a big rock lost in space, or there's a creator behind creation, a a God behind goodness. And if so, then connecting with him in prayer is pretty much the most mind-blowing thing you can do. Archaeologists keep digging stuff up that shows we've always prayed. People of many faiths pray daily. Even atheists admit to praying sometimes. Real prayer is a two-way conversation with the living God who loves and listens to the things we say. Jesus said, ask anything in my name and it'll be done. We have a chance to ask for peace, healing, help, or whatever we need. Life matters, you matter, your choices, thoughts, prayers, and actions echo in eternity. But in case you hadn't noticed, God is pretty much invisible and not always easy to hear. There are distractions, disappointments, and questions that we all share. That's why 24-7 prayer does stuff to help thousands of people in hundreds of places connect with God in new ways. People are learning to pray by just praying. Why don't you take on the challenge of a 24-7 prayer room? Just gather your friends, find a place, pick a week, get creative in the space, and fill every hour of the week with a chain of prayer. Prayer vigils like these have been changing lives for 2,000 years. And today, millions are discovering that God's real. Life's a miracle. And the most powerful thing you can ever do is to pray. My big ask is to be able to hug the people that I love before very long. That I would get to uh, go on holidays at Easter with my family this year who I haven't seen in a whole year. I have a holiday booked in April and I'd really love to go. <laughs> I've got two. Um, one that in 2021 I can go to college in real life rather than on Zoom. One that I would get to see um, my family, particularly my parents, and hug them again. I really miss them. I want to hug people. Uh, I'm just going to go crazy when I can. And the other one is that I can develop my prayer life. But also, um, just really hoping that every member of my family, particularly the ones that don't already know Jesus, will know him. That families would be reunited, and also that I would be reunited with my family. My big ask is that um, we shall all start to meet together again. And for the successful um, rollout of the COVID vaccine. But um, God will continue to uh, protect us. And my big ask for this and also the carol service this evening, in fact, everything we do is that there be um, an encounter with Jesus. Let us pray. 
as the psalmist write, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say this. Those he redeemed from the hands of the fool. It is my prayer that um, we agree with the psalmist this morning that the Lord has really redeemed us. We give thanks to the Lord in all things, Father. We thank you for how far you have brought us. We thank you that throughout this year, all the challenges, difficulties that we have seen, in all of it, you have been faithful. Father, this morning, we draw closer to you and we pray for those who are grieving. We pray for those who are grieving for loved ones, families who are not with us any longer. We pray for those who are grieving for their loss of jobs. We pray for those who are grieving for their financial breakdown. We pray for those who are grieving for families that have um, split apart. Father, we pray that in this season that we are entering into Christmas, your hope will bring them the comfort that they need. We pray for your church. We pray for your community. We pray for your people. We pray for your children. For all that you have provided for us to be able to step into this dark time. Father, we thank you that you've used us all one way or the other to bring light into the darkness. And we give you all the glory you deserve. As uh, Phil Brook put it in his song, the hopes and the fears of all the years are met here in Bethlehem. So as we celebrate Christmas, we celebrate Bethlehem. As we celebrate the cradle and the coming of your son, Jesus Christ, may your hope come and dwell in us that we will remember the most important part of Christmas is that you, God, gave your only begotten son to us so that we will have eternal life. So this morning, I invite you all to open your hearts and receive Christ in it to open your souls and let Christ dwell in it. In Jesus' name I pray. And we continue to pray in the way Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. As we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Now and forever. Amen. The Gospel of Luke. Luke investigated many of the earliest eyewitnesses of the life of Jesus and then composed this account. And the story begins up in the hills of Jerusalem, the place where Israel's ancient prophets said that God himself would come one day to establish his kingdom over all the earth. 
In the city is the temple run by the priests. And one of them, named Zechariah, was working in the temple when he had a vision that freaks him out. An angel appears and says that he and his wife will have a son. What's this all about? Well, Zechariah and his wife, we're told, are very old. They've never been able to have children. And Luke's setting up a parallel here with Abraham and Sarah, the great ancestors of Israel, because they too were very old and could never have kids. Yet God gave them a son, Isaac, which is how the whole story of Israel began. And so Luke's implying here that God's about to do something that significant for this people once again. The angel tells Zechariah to name the son John. And then he says that the son's going to fulfill a promise of Israel's ancient prophets, that somebody would come one day to prepare Israel to meet their God when he arrived to rule in Jerusalem. Because right now, Jerusalem is ruled by the Romans. Mm. Yeah, specifically, it's governed by a man named Herod, who's a puppet king under the Roman Empire. And so the Jewish people wanted nothing more than to be free and govern themselves in their own land. So this is shocking news. Everything's going to change. God's on his way. The reading is from Luke 1, verse 67 to 75. His father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come and has redeemed his people. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he said through his holy prophets of long ago. Salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath he swore to our father Abraham to rescue us from the hand of our enemies and to enable us to serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. Good morning, everyone. This time of year used to be very difficult for me. If you divide my age by 10, that was when I just couldn't wait for Christmas. I mean, I still look forward to it now. But when I was six years old, the waiting one day, one Advent calendar door at a time was torture. And this explosion when Christmas Day arrived, it was just incredible. But not all the waiting was over, even then. Because before we could open our biggest presents, our best presents, we had to wait to the Queen's speech. That was at 3 p.m. There's many great advantages about being married to an Austrian, but one is this, that you get to open your Christmas presents on Christmas Eve. Now, 34 years on, I still feel like it's kind of cheating, and I say, um, but the Queen hasn't spoken yet. I'm sure she said some wonderful things. She always does. But at the age of six, I couldn't really hear them because I was longing and waiting while she was talking. Advent is all about a longing and a waiting of another kind. A longing for what will be. A longing for a time when everything will be changed. A longing for gifts and changes that only God can give and God can make. God's word has been made flesh at the first Christmas. Jesus has been born and his spirit is now poured out on all people just as the prophet Joel foretold. But there's still a waiting for when he will come again and every tear will be dried. What are you waiting for? What are the things you are longing for? There's those things you might be longing for as Christmas presents, if you're fortunate enough uh, to, to get any, that you can put under a tree. But God gives gifts of another kind. As a staff team every week, as we've been uh, hearing a few moments ago, we have what we call big asks. And these are the, the, the things that we're waiting for and longing for God to do, for God to miraculously intervene in answer to prayers. Some of our big asks become big thanks very quickly. But for some of them, there's a lot of waiting and we're still waiting. Because these are situations that we're praying into, often very personal, often very painful because they've involved a waiting. 
they're not the sort of things you can broadcast to the world or put in the chat column next to, the, uh, next to YouTube. But in a few minutes' time, I'm going to invite all of you to bring your big asks, your uh, particular situations where you need God to come into and bring his change, his healing. I'm going to invite you to do just that wherever you are, because wherever you are, the Lord is there. His spirit is with you and your waiting and your praying are not in vain. And this is what a man called Zechariah learns the first Christmas. He's been uh, waiting along with his wife, Elizabeth, not for something, but for someone, to be more precise, for two someones. Zechariah and Elizabeth, now um, quite elderly couple, they were praying and longing for a child to be born to them. And that child has never come. The second someone they are waiting for is the one promised by Isaiah. We heard how Isaiah described that child, um, as Jenny uh, told us earlier on in the service. And for centuries, God's people have been waiting for this child to be born. Zechariah and Elizabeth, they too have been holding on, maybe by their fingertips, to faith that this child will be born to them, the wonderful counsellor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Christmas is the message that their waiting has not been in vain. Zechariah is a a righteous man, a holy man. It's been his big ask, along with that of Elizabeth, along with all God's people, that uh, this uh, child would come. And they haven't stopped making their big asks. They haven't let the disappointments of their uh, hitherto childless marriage, some of you particularly uh, can relate to that big ask, That disappointment hasn't stopped uh, them praying and waiting on God to bring about his change. Zechariah, a priest in the temple, continues to do his duty there. And this particular year, he is the one who is uh, lighting incense, this uh, symbol of prayer, of the big asks going up uh, to God for him to come amongst them. Christmas is the fulfilment of a promise made by God centuries before, a promise of blessing. And God is saying in the first Christmas, I am with you, I am for you, I have come. A name given to Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. And the name Zechariah, in fact, uh, means Uh, Yahweh, the God of glory. He has remembered again. Christmas is God saying, I have remembered again. I am Emmanuel, God with you. 20, 20 years on, 2020 years on today. Jesus is still Emmanuel. This year of waiting and longing and loss and disappointment, God is saying uh, to you and to me the same as he was making clear and saying to Zechariah, I am with you, I am for you. Back when we used to meet together in this church for Sunday services, we used to have one um, prayer I guess I used to say it before every service, and it was this, God, would you save me, save us as your church from going through the motions? What what do I mean? Um, Praying to you, but not really believing. Looking religious, but not longing for you. Reading a script, like my script here, like this talk, but not having this Knowledge that unless you are there, unless you are at work, unless you by your spirits are here with us, it's all um, empty words. Save us from going through the motions. God sustains Zechariah in his waiting through his disappointment, 
He sustained him and kept him faithful and saved him from going through the motions in the temple as he lit the incense there. God met him, he heard his prayers, his big asks. And 20, 20 years on, God is doing the same. He's doing the same for everyone who is waiting for God to show up in the neighborhood, to show up in their situations, to show up in their big asks in yours. As I said, these can be very painful. These can be very personal. We've heard uh, some of ours from our, our staff team. But when the waiting is over and God does uh, come in, Jesus shows up as Zechariah experiences. There's praise and thanksgiving, big thanks. That's what our reading uh, was. It's called the Benedictus, which means uh, the, the blessed one. Zechariah is the blessed one to experience God uh, uh, fulfilling his promise. After years of waiting, God wants you and me to be the blessed one so that we can sing our praises to him. What are you waiting for? What are you longing for? What are your big asks? We've all got them. And Jesus wants to meet you in them. Here at church and on this site right now, if you're listening to this on, a, on Sunday morning, uh, we've got a big ask that this uh, nativity uh, that we have wouldn't just be a, a nice family event, uh, although that would be good as well, but that it would be a meeting with Jesus, as I uh, said earlier. Unless God, the miraculous working God, uh, turns up, it's of no good. But when God turns up, it's of eternal good. He is the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. We've got the same big ask for this evening for our, our carol service at 7.30, that God would be turning up and giving his word of truth and the fulfilling of his promise to all those who are um, longing and waiting for him, maybe even without knowing it. I am with you. I am for you. You are uh, meant to be a blessed one on the receiving end of God's blessing. You and I, we need his miraculous workings in our big asks. So I'm going to ask you now, wherever you are, right now, if this is the right moment for you, and if it isn't to find a right moment at some time this day, to share whatever big ask, whatever big breakthrough that only God can give, to uh, bring it, if you wish, with open hands, your uh, prayer like the incense of uh, Zechariah burning in the temple, rising up to God, and to simply bring that before him now before the one who is Emmanuel, God with you. The Lord is there. His spirit is with you. For a few moments we, we do that, recalling Jesus' promise, who said, seek and you will find. Ask and it will be given to you. Knock and the door will be opened. And as a way of receiving the blessing of God, I invite you to let the truths of this worship song now be God speaking by his spirit into uh, your heart. You are matchless in grace and mercy There is nowhere we can hide from your love You are steadfast, never failing You are faithful All creation is in awe of who you are 
You're the healer of the sick and the broken You are comfort for every heart in loss Our King, our Saviour forever For eternity we will sing of all you've done For eternity we will sing of all you've done We sing God with us God for us Nothing can come against No one can stand between us God with us God for us, nothing can come against, no one can stand between us. Your heart, it moves with compassion. There is life. There is healing in your love You're the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit For eternity we will sing of all you've done We sing God with us God for us Nothing can come against No between us, God with us, God for us, nothing can come against, no one can stand between us. Woo! Mm-hmm. 
Thanks for joining us for our service this morning. It's been great to be together to worship with you. If there's anything that you would like to, to, to pray with someone about, to stand alongside them as you hold your big asks uh, before God, um, do join our Zoom after the service and we can, we can break out into groups for, for prayer and for chat. Uh, so if you want to, to stand with someone in prayer if we, or if you want to chat with people, um, do join our Zoom tea and coffee and the details will come up in the chat now. Now, coming up in the next few days, tonight it's our Watch at Home carol service at 7.30 on this same YouTube channel. So have you told your friends and family about this yet? Get your phones out now and do it. Uh, it's not too late to let people know that they can join us on the, from the comfort of their own sofas uh, to sing carols and to hear the message of Christmas. So do let people know about that right now. Then on Christmas Eve at 11.15, we're gathering here in the church building to bring Christmas Day in with our midnight communion service. Uh, there's still places for that, so, um, but we need you to register in advance. So if you go to our website, uh, you, can, you can still register for some the places that are left. And then on Christmas Day morning, we have our big All Saints Christmas cracker of a Zoom. Um, if you haven't yet got the Zoom details, let us know. You should have got them in the weekly email. But if you haven't got them yet, give us a shout and we'll make sure that everybody who wants to tune into that Zoom service is enabled to, to join in with a, with a Christmas morning fun. Uh, but for now... If it helps you, I'm going to pray a blessing for you. And for some of us, it helps us to hold our hands out as a gesture of saying, yes, I want to say yes to what God does in my life. So I'm going to pray a prayer of blessing as our service comes to an end. So may the guidance of our wonderful counsellor, the strength of our mighty God, the tenderness of our everlasting Father, and the transforming presence of the Prince of Peace be yours today. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and those who you love today and always. Amen.